One of the pieces of content that was originally scheduled for today was on an artist, Saeed. I know you guys have been asking for a breakdown of his kind of colorful summary sounds. And don't worry, that's still on the way. If you're signed up at the Patreon, you can watch it from right now and download the stems and samples alongside it with all the other goodies. But I realized when I was looking at that content and looking at my sample pack, there was one plugin that I was using way more than anything else. And I realized I'm also no longer really using RC20. Something has replaced it. So on this rare occasion, I found myself pretty excited about an audio effect. And I think you're gonna feel the same. So why don't we just jump into it? Right, so don't go anywhere. I've got a question for you at the end of this episode, as well as a kind of new segment. I'd love for you guys to get involved and get your take on things. So one of the plugins that I'm most excited about right now is from Excite Audio. It's called Lifeline Console. It's probably looking a little familiar to you. It's got a very RC20 vibe to it, albeit like a little bit cleaner, I would say. What I'm gonna do is just duplicate this grand piano instrument so we can listen to it. And then what we can do is create a brand new initial preset. So this is Lifeline Console. It's a modular channel strip that adds kind of an analog character or color to your sound. Now, one of the things that I should bring to your attention from the get-go is that we can change the order of the chain. So we can have the compressor right up front if we want. If we wanna do all our modulation, and kind of tape, hiss and noise. We can have that up front. It's gonna change our sound if we have our saturator ahead of our channel strip, as opposed to at the end of our channel strip. You don't really get that with things like RC20. They kind of all work in unison. So that's really exciting from the get go. Let me jump into what is involved and how it changes our sound. Let's just listen to the piano completely clean. Once again, you got a little feel for this track in the introduction to this episode. If you wanna get that breakdown right away, it's over at my Patreon. Let's look at the first part of the channel strip, which is pre. This is essentially saturation along an EQ curve. At the top, you'll notice that we always get these different algorithms for the particular effects that falls below it. So this we have bright, warm, and dark. And if we increase the drive and the push, you'll start to see what kind of saturation is going on. With bright, we've got a brighter sense of the saturation. Warm is a more evenly spread saturation and dark is gonna give you more of a low end boost and saturation there. So the amount that you're exaggerating comes from drive and with push, we can essentially exaggerate those frequencies along the curve. This is really nice, but maybe you want a little bit more control. So something that I really like about Lifeline Console is that all of these tabs have a main and an advanced view. And with advanced view, you can edit these and manipulate them just a little bit more. Let's say that you do actually like the sound of the exaggerated low end, but you just wanna change the shape of that curve a little bit. Well, just edit shape and we'll get some different kind of exaggerated looks. The same goes for bright, kind of smooths out that line or makes it a little bit more harsh. We can also choose our cue point or switch the bias. Which way does this EQ tilt? So we exaggerate more of the high end, less of the low end. We can also roll off some of the low end and that drive is there as we saw before. So that's really lovely in itself. If we move along, we've got just our basic EQ. Again, this comes with some algorithms and some saturation with vintage or dirty there. As far as I'm aware, these algorithms are gonna create more of a muffled or a more 
kind of saturated tone. Again, we have our main and advanced here. I'm not going to patronize you guys too much. We've got four plot placements. We can create a roll off on each side and we can exaggerate that roll off in the top right there. How steep do you want your curve? And we can adjust our cue points as well for these particular plot placements in the middle. Something that I think is fantastic is all of these channel strips have a mid side mode and a left right pan mode. We can unlink that pan in and focus just on the left side, just on the right side, or just on the mid frequencies or the sideband profile as well, which really just expands this plugin even more. We're gonna close this one down. I don't think we need to look at the different EQ parameters. So we're just gonna set that back to main. Compression has got me really excited, which is a sentence that I never thought I'd say. So here we have just our basic compression. thing that I like the most is when we go into our advanced view, we can really look at what the compressor is focusing on, our release and attack time, all the standard stuff that you think you would find in a compressor. But they've also included this automatic makeup game, which is something I realized once I'd found it, I'm thinking, why don't all plugins have an automatic makeup game? So what we can do here is tap that A, play our sound and it'll listen and adjust your gain accordingly so you're only hearing the compressor. And if you feel like it's still not quite accurate, we can hold that A down and it's gonna listen for longer to make sure that it's made the adjustments that is truly accurate to the volume that it's receiving. Super nice. As we move on to our next channel strip, you might notice that you've actually run out of space. And this is the only thing that I don't like is you can't two finger scroll with the trackpad. You have to look for this little left and right arrow to be able to scroll. So that's messed me up a couple of times, but I'm sure that's a quick fix in a future update. It's a brand new plugin after all. So in our module tab, we're actually met with some different algorithms for tape, vinyl and cassette and how that kind of flutters or pitch warbles detunes your particular sound. So if we play this piano here, we can increase the wow and you'll start to hear that detune kind of feel. We can sync that with our metronome as well. So we can just have quarter note up and down detuning. So with this synced to the global metronome, you'll notice that tape is the least exaggerated. Vinyl, a little bit more warped, and cassette extremely warped. So there's fun ways to play around with that sound there. Something that I've been really enjoying that I didn't notice until later when I was creating the sample pack is we also have this undo button. So this works for each of the channel strips individually. So if you wanted to go back and maybe undo something, just double click that little undo button to go back to your previous settings. Finally, at the very end, something that you're gonna to wanna to combine with that modular tab, I would imagine, is where and we have some different simulations of noise loops. So we've got this amp hiss here, we've got hum, mechanical noise, dust, and you can also adjust the age of this as well. It's gonna create more of a darker tone. Inside age, you're also able to adjust the amount of clicks and pops and artifacts that you can hear within that noise. I really like that you can sync this as well. If you've ever had some noisy, crackly samples or use the RC20. I don't like that it's seemingly random. I want it to be able to be loopable and to create a rhythm out of that. So the fact that you can sync that up, let's add some dust and some noise here. So you can hear those kind of clicks and pops and stuff. You can slow those down, have them coming in quite fast and how much they're audible. In each of the tabs, we also have this master gain as well. So if you want to adjust the output volume, than you can do. Finally, you have this vintage clean and dry module, which is essentially just the normal audio signal going through. Vintage is probably mirrored on more of an analog desk setup and clean being more a modern mixing desk setup. There's a ton of different presets. So let's just go for keys because we're using keys and see how this sounds.
colourful is really fun. So vintage is sounding a little bit more dull, right? So if you thought that this one sounded, you know, it could be brighter. With shine, you can increase just kind of the brightness in the mid side frequencies. And with warmth, you can increase kind of the low frequencies and just exaggerate that a little bit more. I really enjoy this plugin and I've genuinely swapped it out for a lot of RC20. I've used it on guitars, the piano, I've used it on my brass section here. I've even used it on drums just to beef up some of the exaggeration there. And if you're signed up to the Patreon, you'll also notice that I've included Lifeline Expanse with Lifeline Console, which gives me even more control over the sound with some kind of bit crushing, some reverb. I've been using plate a lot, which is really nice. You can reamp these through a variety of speakers and audio equipment. We've got further saturation here with fuzz and distortion algorithms, and then some different kind of haas and detune effects here. They're two fantastic tools to use in conjunction with each other, especially as lo-fi evolves over time and it's not necessarily about that degraded sound anymore. And you're noticing that the lo-fi playlists are getting a little bit more ambient and atmospheric. This is nice to add just a little flutter to your tone, but not completely degrade the audio so it sounds like it's coming through, you know, an old gramophone. Let me know what you think of this plugin in the comment section though, and if you do want to download it, I've included links in the description. Oh, let me just remind you real quick that Excite Audio, the guys behind Lifeline, aren't a sponsor of this channel, but do you know who is? That's right, you should know by now, it's DistroKid. I've used DistroKid long before they became a sponsor of the channel, and previous to that, I used a ton of other distribution services. I've actually never been happier, more pleased with just the upload process and ease of the service. They also have a ton of tools to help you get your music out to a wider audience. So if you feel like signing up and releasing your music with DistroKid, Use the link in the description below as you'll get 7% off your first year. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, please do like and subscribe. That Saeed episode will come eventually, but as a reminder, if you can't wait and you wanna download the samples and stems and get a breakdown on that kind of boom bap summary feel, head over to the Patreon. Now, I wanna present a new segment that I might start bringing to the end of episodes so we can actually have a conversation. You guys don't normally get the insight as to what I'm listening to. And in that way, you guys get a little insight to my world. We can converse, debate, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong for the music that I'm excited about. And it also give me more insight to future episodes. One of the pieces of music that I'm most excited about this week comes out tomorrow if you're watching this in the real time of the upload. It's gotta be Joey Badass 2000 album, a follow-up to 1999. Probably gonna feature a lot of like static selector, which I'm super excited about. I'm wondering if there'll be other producers on the project as well. Let me know, do you wanna see more Joey Badass content or other featured rappers on the channel and their kind of sound? And let me know what you're most excited about to listen to this week or this month as well. I would absolutely love to know. It's been an absolute pleasure to sit down with you guys today. As always, I thank you for swinging by and I'll see you guys next time.